वेलकम टू द माई चैनल अमित कुमार गोला लाइक सब्सक्राइब और शेयर करना बिल्कुल ना भूलो दोस्तों एंड घंटी को दबाएं दोस्तों कहना अपने आप कुछ कुछ करना पड़ेगा जीतने को तो लड़ना पड़ेगा एंड रीड ना बुक Chapter 1 Always Curious Thomas Alva Edison was born on February 11th, 1847 on a cold, snowy night in Milan, Ohio. His parents, Nancy and Samuel, named him Thomas after his great uncle and Alva after Captain Alva Bradley. a good friend of his father the family didn't call him tom or tommy they called him al little al wanted to find out everything about the world around him he went about it like a scientist doing an experiment he didn't just ask questions he liked to find out the answers himself once Al broke open a bumblebee's nest to see what was inside. Another time, he watched birds eat worms and fly off. So, Al made a mixture out of water and mashed worms. Then he gave it to a neighbor girl to drink. He wanted to see if eating worms would make her fly, but it just made her sick. and al got a licking with a birch branch nothing stopped al not bees not a licking not even falling into a grain storage bin he was walking around the rim of the bin when he fell in luckily someone pulled him out by the legs just before he was buried under the wheat al's father owned a small grain and timber mill in Milan boats like captain alva bradley's carried timber down from canada across lake erie down the huron river and through the milan canal there it was cut into logs and planks at mills like mr edison's trucks and cars had not yet been invented and trains didn't come to milan but one day a railroad line was built trains started chugging into town and the canal wasn't so important any more the railroads were faster and easier to use for carrying things around the country so when al was 7 the family moved to a new home in port huron michigan more than a hundred miles north of milan They lived in a big house on the St. Clair River. Al's father did lots of things to earn a living. He worked as a carpenter, he ran a grocery store, he had a vegetable garden, he tried farming. He even built a 100-foot tower overlooking the river. For 25 cents, anyone could climb up and watch the boats go by. The Edisons had only been there a short time when Al caught scarlet fever. It was a serious illness back then without the medicines used today. He ran a high fever. A red rash broke out on his skin. Al got better, but he realized that he couldn't hear as well as he used to, probably because of the scarlet fever. In school the teacher complained that Al didn't pay attention he would drift off maybe he was bored or maybe he just couldn't hear everything one day 8-year-old Al heard his teacher telling someone that he was addled he meant Al's brain was scrambled when Al told his mother she was furious She took him out of school and began teaching him at home. Al loved to read. 
How surprised his teacher would have been to see the difficult books his mother gave to him, books about history, nature, and science. He read them just as fast as he could. One book was a favorite. It was called a school compendium of natural and experimental philosophy. It was a science book. It talked about electricity, batteries, electrical toys, and a lot more. It had simple experiments. Al got so excited he started doing experiments all over the house. He used stuff like feathers, beeswax, and chemicals from the drug store. His bedroom was full of jars and bottles. Finally, his mother sent him to the basement to set up his own lab. One part in the book interested Al most of all. It was about Morse's telegraphic alphabet. Morse was the name of a code. It was used to send messages over telegraph wires. There were no telephones yet. You couldn't talk to someone far away, but you could send messages that reached them quickly. Samuel Morse made up the code. Instead of using letters and numbers, he used dots and dashes to send messages that became known as telegrams. The railroad played a big part because the telegraph wires that carried telegrams were strung on poles along the railroad tracks. An operator in a railroad station could wire ahead if schedules changed or if there was an accident or a delay of some kind. Telegraphy made the trains safer. An operator tapped out a message of dots and dashes with a metal key on a board. The message raced along a wire as electrical pulses to the next station. The dots and dashes were notched, or cut, into a roll of paper. An operator decoded the message using Morse code and wrote down the message in words. Telegrams were expensive, so mostly businesses sent them. But people sent them, too, for news they wanted to get to their families and friends fast, like the birth of a new baby. Al couldn't wait to try it. He made a simple telegraph key, and he began learning Morse code. He even set up a wire between his house and a friend's house nearby. As they learned the code and they began sending messages back and forth. Soon Al would go to work on the railroad. It was there that his interest in telegraphy grew much more serious. मैं हूं आपका मोटिवेशनल स्पीकर अमित कुमार गोला नेशनल लेवल कोर्स थैंक यू सो मच